All right, as we get set for this kickoff after Peabody takes the lead 13 to 7, Taylor Spencer is going to tell us about that score and drive for the Golden Tide. It's a six place, just uh, two passes and four runs, and the 10 yard touchdown run to, for Braxton Bogus to take the lead here in early in the second half. All right, a 57 yard scoring drive uh, for the Golden Tide. And Peabody's back in front, 13 to seven. Sanders is set to kick off. High spiraling kick, end over end kick, taken back here at the 15 yard line by number 15. And he breaks out of the pack. Ooh. And Drew Sanders comes in leading with his head right there. And I believe the officials could have called him for leading with the head, but they didn't. I'm shocked they didn't call a penalty there. No question about it to me that just a little too aggressive there. And you know, it doesn't take much in this rivalry between Trenton and Humboldt to spark uh, the teams. And you, you have to think, you don't want to do things like that just to rile the other team, give them a little bit more uh, chip on their shoulder. Sanders was aggressive coming in, finishing up number 15 right there at the end uh, for the Vikings. Uh, Troy Agnew, he laid on the ground just for a few moments and then finally got up. But uh, in this day and age where they're trying to protect these kids from head injuries, uh, really that was a dangerous play because Drew led with the head, it looked like. It was just as dangerous for him as it was the other player. Probably more so. First and 10 for Humboldt, tied in to the right. High formation, ball handed off to number 23. He's going to have very little running room, and he's going to be tackled right there by Ray Buchanan on the play. Chris Williams on the carry for the Vikings. As we close down that running game, we're going to see the passing game come back into action, and that's what's been dangerous, really, for uh, Peabody. Humboldt has been very effective in the passing game so far, not a large number of completions but the ones they have completed have been de have been uh, deadly high formation kind of offset to the right tied oh, into the right jumps somebody jumped but nobody called it and Peabody nearly forces the turnover right there Ryan White comes in cleans him up along with big number 79 Bubba Bailey for the for the Golden Tide well we see the uh, tailback for Humboldt just made a, a, a bit of a, a jerking move forward should have been called, but wasn't, but a good play by the defense. Third and long for Humboldt. This is obviously a throwing down for them. They've had pretty good success tonight, rolling the quarterback out, hitting somebody out here in the flat. And that looks like what they're set up again to do is they're going to be in the eye formation. We can't play these zones. We've got to be man on man and take this ball away from them. Be tight. See, man on the outside. And Logan Morris was ready for it. He read it the whole way, and he was out there ready to break it up, and he did a good job breaking it up. Well, that was a good play by Logan Morris. I'm gonna tell you, the, the pass coverage broke down there. We had one man break deep, and there was no one deep. We're gonna have to come up with a solution to this. Tight end was uh, Keenan James, and he was lined up to the left that time, and he was coming across, dragging across the middle. Nonetheless, Peabody holds fourth down. Blankenship's on to punt for the Vikings. Spiraling kick. What is he doing? What is Malik doing right there? Number one, he should have caught the ball. Number two, when he hit the ground, he should have stayed away from it. Coaches cannot be happy with that. However... Peabody escapes a mistake right there. As Dokes comes up and handles that football probably when he shouldn't have. Nonetheless, he gets away with it and Peabody has the football. First and 10 from the 28 yard line, maybe the 27. Bogus is communicating with the sideline, kind of unclear about who's Supposed to be on the field, and at the last moment, here comes Tay-Tay Nesbitt, 10 seconds to go. Had plenty of time. Still had about 10 seconds on the play clock. 
and we didn't have the right personnel on the field, and Coach Gaddis just calls timeout. So we'll take time out. Well, let's stay with it, Paul, right here, and let's talk about Peabody High School soccer. Uh, we had an outstanding season this year with the girls' soccer, and uh, they had their awards banquet last night, and several of our young ladies that are affiliated with our broadcast um, were outstanding uh, recipient uh, players. And uh, Aaron Johnson, uh, who is uh, Joey uh, Johnson's daughter, here in the broadcast booth, she got the most improved player as a freshman, Rachel Schulze, um, Paul Schulze's daughter. Rachel helps us in our broadcast each and every week. She was voted best defensive player by her teammates. Olea Jarrett was the best offensive player. Caleb Bland was the MVP. And Kennedy Morris uh, was named to all-region soccer player for the Golden Tide Ladies Soccer. So congratulations to the ladies for an outstanding soccer season, and we're back from this timeout. Peabody's got it uh, first and 10. Spread formation, Bogus back to pass. He's looking deep and across the middle. Najwan Miller's wide open. All he had to do was catch it and walk into the end zone as Bogus can't throw it any better than that, Joey. Well, no commentary necessary. A beautiful pass, a beautiful play call. We've been, we've been setting that up all night. We haven't run that play. We've been pounding the uh, the running game, setting up a, a play like that. You just hope the next time Najwan will be able to pull it down. Beautiful, beautiful throw and uh, not so good of a catch. Second and ten for the Golden Tide. Ball handed off to Tavarian Barnett. He's going to have a pickup of about seven on the play. Should bring up second and three. Well, Paul, you know, even though we didn't complete that pass, we did accomplish something, and that is, again, um, getting the Humboldt defense off balance a little bit. They have not been looking for the pass, and they're not prepared for the pass. Every time there's two, at least two Peabody players who are open, so we have to keep going back to that pass. Correction, it's not second and three, third and three for the Golden Tide. Barnett handed the football again, and he's going to be stopped short as he's going to be wrestled back to the ground, and he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Well, it's going to be interesting, you would think, here. We're going to have to punt. Third and short, but we are. Let's see if they'll jump off sides again. Offense stays on the field. Coach Mint signals in a play. Big gamble Fourth here and for one. Big Fourth gamble. and one. Tied in to the right. Bogus in the backfield. No intention looks like. And doesn't look like Humboldt's going to jump off sides right here. We're going to have to burn another timeout. It's going to be the second in this Let's second Let's don't half. burn a timeout. Let's just take a five-yard penalty and punt the football. And Peabody takes another timeout. I hate to see us use those timeouts this early in the contest mm. here in the second half. Six minutes and 12 seconds to go, and Peabody's going to be punting the football here on fourth, foot, on fourth down. We'll come back after this short break as you're watching Golden Tide Football on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. Peabody's going to punt the football on fourth down. They've already used two timeouts here in the second half. Sanders is back to kick. Spotlight is Logan Morris. Long snapping is uh, number 15, Daniel Hodges. Pretty good kick right there by 
Uh, Drew Sanders takes a favorable bounce. <laughs> and, and Humboldt players right there around it the whole time, Joey. I just don't believe they coach kids the way they used to when I was in high school. Number one, what we've seen all year long from all the schools is nobody knows how to fair catch a ball anymore. And number two, when the ball hits the ground, they just dance around the ball. I don't understand As an offensive happening. player, you're supposed to get as far away from that ball as possible. Uh, but we see kids just stay right with the ball, run, run right beside it. And, uh, you know, a football is not like a basketball. It can take a crazy hop and just jump up there and get you any moment. Yeah, Nonetheless, been... great play for Drew Sanders there, kicking Peabody out of a hole and getting Humboldt in one. First and ten. Split backfield, tight end to the right. Kind of an offset backfield now. Going to be an end around, kind of a reverse look to Agnew, number 15. And he's going to be tackled. And the ball comes out. And who gets on it? And Humboldt maintains possession. Now, Jawan Miller made a great play as he came up that time, made a big time tackle for loss. Ball was out of bounds when it came out. Loss of about two on the play. Najawan Miller came up and played a pretty good corner right there. Oh, I guess that was Dre Ballou that came up and played a pretty good corner. And Jordan Johnson out there, number 19, the outside linebacker. Second and 13. Ryan White's there to stop him. But before Ryan gets a chance, number one, Logan Morris has got him around the ankle. Logan Morris has had a big game already. Uh, and, you know, we have been able thus far to really corral Williams. He is a very uh, quick running back, has the capability, much like Tavarian Barnett, uh, to escape and to get out in space and make people miss. But the defense have done a good job keeping him corralled. But now you see third and ten. You, you see the passing game perhaps come into play. Joey, I think our defense has improved since Logan's been playing the last four or five games. Uh, he's a pretty sure tackler and uh, seems to be right where he needs to be. Boom! Big stick right there by number 67. Hayden Whitby came in and just gave himself an introduction. Wow! What a shot! Well, that tells you about Hayden Whitby. He will knock your teeth out and then help you up and pat you on the backside. Great play. What a shot right there by Hayden. I hope that we're going to have an instant replay of that one. Dick Hayden came in and gave him an introduction. Get the number off that truck that just hit me. Hunt formation for the Vikings. And Dokes comes up and makes a fair catch, Joey. Well, we do know how. All we had to do was talk about it. Had a boy, Malik. Good job. You think how many yards does that save you in the course of a game if you'll catch the ball? Great job. Gives us great field position. Peabody will have it first and 10 from Humboldt's 36 yard line. We've talked about this all year as well. Peabody has a weapon. We believe in their kicker, although Drew missed an extra point a few minutes ago. He's not missed many, and he uh, has the capability of kicking a long field goal. Barnett on the carry. He's going to go in, untouched. Touchdown, Golden Tide. And just like that, Peabody goes up 19 to 7. And you have to wonder how Humboldt will play from this kind of deficit. I think they're probably a pretty good character team. They're going to keep fighting. But sometimes the disappointment's too much. Sanders on for the extra point. Good snap, hold down, and the kick is up. And the kick is left again. And so two extra points in a row have been off to the left. Nonetheless, Peabody has the lead 19 to seven. And we'll be back for the kickoff after this short break as you're watching Golden Tide football here on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel.
Right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24 7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. Peabody's got a 19-7 lead here with 3.37 to go in the third period. Up by 12. Sanders is set to kick off. Kind of a short kickoff down to about the 22. And he's on the loose. And he may go all the way as number 15 carries the ball down and Ty Fields hustles down the field and gets him out of bounds at about the four-yard line. And that's Almost Troy Agdu, number 15, who took that short kickoff, went down the right side and nearly got by all the de Peabody defenders. And uh, right at the last moment, the senior leader, Ty Fields, caught him at the four and knocked him out, Joey. Well, and the thing about it is that long run is going to affect him uh, on, this, on this stand here inside the five. Exact same kick, uh, exact same guy from Humboldt caught the ball from the last kickoff, this time just a little bit more slippery as he slips through that front line. So just like that, Peabody has it uh, has their backs to the wall here. And I have never seen teams have to call timeout the way these teams have called timeout tonight. You know, early in the season you understand it because uh, guys are a little new to the systems maybe, but they're going to use them all. You've never seen teams use all their timeouts. I'd like to find out if we get an extra timeout in the playoffs. Humboldt <laughs> certainly had four timeouts the first half, and maybe we're all going to get four, a combination of eight timeouts. Yet, but this is already three timeouts here in the second half. Let's just stay with it as Humboldt's already back out on the field. But uh, here the first week of the playoffs, it's just kind of unheard of to see the clock being managed the way it has tonight. Uh, really, by both teams, we've, we've had to call some timeouts that you wouldn't think this time of the year you would want to call timeout. Uh, but that's just the way this ball game has gone. Well, we know this is going to come down in the fourth quarter. You knew it before the first kickoff, and that's the way it's turned out. So as I said a minute ago, Peabody kind of has its back to the wall right here. Power eye formation to the left for Humboldt. Ball's going to be handed off back here to number 42. He fumbles the football. Does, Pumboat come, does Peabody come out with it? They're going to call it down. Aaron Lowry came out of there with the football, but the referee said he was already down at the five-yard line, so loss of one on the play. You know, football fans get spoiled now in college and in the pros with the, with the uh, replay. Of course, that's not going to come in the high school ranks, but and shouldn't. It's good to see that sprinkler going over on the softball field. Get the softball field good and watered. <laughs> Power out right for Humboldt, tight end to the right. Ball handed off to Williams. He breaks his way out to the right, and he goes in for a score as he outflanks the Peabody defense and gets around Najawan Miller, who misses the tackle, and goes in for six points. You give Humboldt new life with that. Had them on the ropes right here yeah. at 19 to 7. And they're back into this contest now, 19 to 13, and could be 19 to 14 if Blankenship can convert on this extra point. And tonight yet they've had trouble with the kickoff coverage, something they've been impressive at all year. The kick is down. And it is up and it's good. And so we've got a 19 to 14 ball game. Peabody holds on to a five point lead with two minutes and 34 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We'll come back for the kickoff as Peabody goes back on offense. You're watching Golden Tide football here from Walter Kilzer Stadium on the campus of Peabody High School in Trenton, Tennessee. We'll be back after this word from our sponsors. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. 
I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. Blankenship set to kick off for the Vikings. Back deep for the Golden Tide is number 22, Devarian Barnett. Peabody will be lucky if it gets back there to him. It's all night long. Peabody's been kicking it out of, I mean, Humboldt's been uh, squib kicking it, and that time they just decide to kick it out of bounds, and Peabody will get the ball at the 35-yard line where they'll have it first and 10. Well, we've seen this from a lot of teams this year, trying to get cute with the kickoffs, and, you know, if you're going to do that, just kick it out of bounds and uh, let the team start at 35. Well, it'll be at the 40-yard line. I said 35, but Peabody will have it first and 10 at the 40-yard line, so he's in better field position. Tied in to the left, two wide outs to the right. Ball's handed off to number 22, Tavarian Barnett. He's going to be tackled after a short game. Just kind of limited as this game goes on. If, if he has a crease, he has some room, but getting tighter and tighter at the interior line. A lot of weapons for Peabody not able to be used. The ball's been thrown around, just not being able to hang on. Tight end to the right for Peabody. Barnett on the left side, two wide outs to the right. Bogus back, hands the ball off to Barnett. He's running wide out here, and there's a horse collar called right there, and it's gonna be first down for Peabody. Barnett slow to get up. Coach Gaddis is out there to kind of nurture him and love on him a little bit, saying, come on now, you're all right. Barnett finally gets up, gets off the field, but into the contest will be number 24, William Harris. Be interested to see how many carries Tabaring has had tonight. It's been a bunch. Barnett's shoe flies off in the process. Horse collaring is the call against the Vikings. And you're liable to see Peabody throw the football right here after that 15 yard penalty at the end of a good run. Let's just go ahead and, and, and throw the football and score right here. Well, we, we can't play too conservatively, even being up five points at this point. We're going to have to be aggressive. Bogus on the carry, and he's going to be tackled right there in the backfield. As that didn't fool Humboldt a bit. They were ready for it. You didn't think they were going to give the ball to Harris, his first uh, play into the ball game. Uh, I was hoping we would throw the ball, but the coaches decided not to. Bogus is uh, stopped after a loss of about one. Well, the Peabody offense has evolved as the season has uh, come to, uh, I won't say the end, but come to the latter part of it, where it's really Bogus and Barnett. I mean, that's really the offense at this point with a sprinkling of passes. It's not how this season started. Seven seconds on the play clock and Peabody's fixing to have to spin and call another timeout and they do. And so that's Peabody's third timeout already called here in the second half. 39.6 seconds to go. Is that the second or the third guys? I thought it was the third already. Um, we'll, we'll, check on, we'll check on it here as we take a break. 39.6 seconds to go here in the third period. We'll be back after this short break. At Raspberry Tire, we can help you with brakes, transmission flushes, interstate battery replacement, all types of suspension repairs, and alignments. We carry several major oil brands and tire brands, including Firestone and Bridgestone. 
Our service center can balance both passenger car tires and semi-truck tires and fill your tires with nitrogen. With 30 years of towing experience, we can haul small, compact cars to semi-trucks and we are the only record service in Gibson County with heavy-duty towing and recovery services. Come visit us at 2216 Highway 45 Bypass, Trenton. So Peabody's out of timeouts as they've used all three here in the third period. 39.6 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Second down and 11. Barnett takes the ball going wide and see if he can outflank the defense, and he does. He gets around them, and he's going to have a pickup of about five on the play where it'll bring up second and five. Excuse me, third and five. Barnett shows not only speed, but he shows his toughness just to play before. He's taken down hard. Uh, comes up gingerly favoring, favoring one of his ankles, I believe. But he turns on the Jets and makes the corner that time. Third and a long five, possibly third and six here. Gadlin and Miller spread out to the right side, joined by Ryan White at the tight end. Toss sweep out here to number 22. Tavarian Barnett, he gets around them. And I think they grabbed his face mask, but then let go of it, and Peabody's going to have a first down. And so a little creativity there on the offense. That was just nothing but a toss sweep coming to the right side, and I like it. Kind of reverses out toss sweep. I've not seen that this year. Maybe I was sleeping somewhere along the way, but maybe they... New wrinkle here on the spread, spread offense for Coach Gaddis as uh, Balkus just kind of spun around uh, in the quarterback position. Toss sweep, nothing but a student body right. And uh, Well, when you have a, a running Barnett back like was able to get around Barnett, them. that works. He makes a lot of plays look good. So we're just going to get ready to start the fourth quarter. Peabody's holding, holding on to a five-point lead. And uh, we'll be back for the start of the fourth quarter as Peabody has just made a first down. You're watching high school football from Walter Kilzer Stadium here on the campus of Peabody High School. We'll be back after this short break. Right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state. Because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it, from cost to coverage, all backed by 24 7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm agent Amy Rear in Trent and officially get to a better state with State Farm. First and 10 for the Golden Tide. Spread formation continues. Tied in to the right side. Bogus looks back to the sideline, gets another play. And the ball's gonna be handed off to Tavarian Barnett right up the middle. He's still on his feet, running forward. Gain of about five on the play. Got a Humboldt player down. Humboldt player down on the, the turf as we pull back here and see what's wrong with the young man. Hope there's nothing too, too much wrong as he's being seen about. Let's take a break with him right here as you're watching high school football. The ball game blitz. TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again.
That was Marshawn Cox, number 71, down on the field for the Vikings. Glad to see him walking off under his own power. Uh, he's 260-pound tackle, guard, and defensive tackle for the Vikings. Second and five for Peabody as we come back from that injury timeout. Tied in to the left side of the formation as Peabody has the strength of their side coming this way. And there's Tavarian Barnett breaking loose and he's gonna have uh, enough for a first down. As another State Farm first down for the Golden Tide as the ball's down to about the 12 yard line. Well, a good block on that left side by Nodjuan Miller. He strings his man along, gives Tavari time to pick up that first down. We've had two very entertaining Humboldt Trenton games this year. And Peabody's got a pretty good shot of winning both games. They've already won one, and I think they've got a good chance of winning this ball game if they can just hold on. Bogus runs to the right. Turns it back up, gonna have a gain of about two before he's finally corralled and thrown backwards by the defense from the Vikings. Again, Bogus with several, several carries in this game already. Right he here. just keeps getting up, which is good. But right uh, here's kind of where you wanna see that little, fake that play and throw a little dump pass over the middle or a little, uh, well, little Humboldt short pass. Told them they're not ready for the pass. Uh, we've, we've been unsuccessful not some of the time because of us, not them. Barnett up the middle is going to have the ball down to about the four-yard line. Pickup of about uh, five. Going to make it second down and two, third and two, excuse me. Lowry's into the contest is uh, Peabody will have not only a tight end, but they'll kind of have a blocking back in the pitcher, pitcher as well. And these packages, uh, Lowry usually lines up uh, kind of as a uh, Seven seconds. blocking back. Five seconds to go on the play clock. And that's Barnett breaking loose. He's got both hands on the football. Touchdown for the Golden Tide. Tavarian was full speed by the time he got to the line of scrimmage. They weren't going to keep him out. Barnett takes a pretty good shot there at the end of that play. Peabody will be going for two. Think about this is, we have no replacement for Tavarian Barnett. We've got some pretty good running backs, but uh, nothing that compares to him. He's got to stay healthy. Harris is in the backfield with Bogus. Little pass out here to Miller. Miller breaks free and he gets the ball in. Touchdown! Two point conversion. Najawan Miller breaks free and he gets the ball in. Put your helmet on, young man. Act like you've done it before. Nine minutes and 32 seconds to go. 27 to 14. Peabody's up by 13. Let's take a break. As the Golden Tide are up 13, you're watching high school football here on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. All right, let's hear from our man Taylor Spencer. Tell us about that drive for the Golden Tide that ended up in a touchdown. Play was 10, 10 plays, uh, 10 straight runs, a 60-yard touchdown scoring drive, plus two-point conversion to make it 27-14 Trenton. 
Sanders is pigeon, getting a pooch kick over here on the side. And Peabody gets on the football. Logan Morris is right there. Johnny on the spot for the Golden Tide. Another mistake by the Humboldt player. He should have never even touched that ball. It was headed out of bounds. They would have had it at the 40, but instead, he tries to make a play, goes right through his arms. Huge turn of events here in this game. And so Peabody's got another opportunity to score deep in Humboldt's territory. 28 yard line as they force a turnover here on a short pooch kick. Joey, I believe that ball was going to go out of bounds if he hadn't received it, but uh, their misfortune is our good luck. You got to make, you got to make uh... William Harris on the run. He's breaking free and he's got the ball down to about the 13 yard line. Good strong run right there by Willoughby on that play, Joey. We said that uh, there's got a replacement for Tavarian, but you know what? I may have been wrong the way that young man just ran the ball. And so William Harris comes in and makes a strong run for the Golden Tide, first and 10. He has fresh legs and he's ready to go. Nobody fooled right there on that play as Cox comes in. Number 42 for uh, the, the Vikings. He's uncontested, has a free shot against Bogus. And well, excuse me, Cornelius Watson come in and just sacked Bogus for about a six yard loss on the play. He comes in off that left end of Humboldt and nobody accounts for him. He's too quick for that. He's gonna make the play every time. Second and 16 for the Tide, deep in Humboldt's territory. Harris running the ball out wide, cuts it back up, and he's gonna be tackled right there by several defenders from Humboldt. Well, running the clock becomes important now. You're up 27, 14, eight minutes left. You're up enough to be a little more conservative to run this clock out. Certainly you want to score, but you want to run as much off as you can here with third and long. I say let's throw it and win. <laughs> let's throw it and score. You know, usually conservative will get you beat. Well, that's true, but that gummit, you always want to score another one against Humboldt. Absolutely. This is more than just a football game. This is bragging rights in the county. Bogus on the keeper. He's going to go into the touchdown. Golden Tide. I think the air has gone out of the Humboldt defense. They almost let him make his way into the end zone. Spirit is broken at this point. You have to take advantage when the momentum is on your side. Peabody has done that. And so the tide is rolling here in the second half. If Sanders can convert, they'll be up by 20. Here in this first round playoff game against the Humboldt Vikings. Snap is down and the kick is up and Drew's trying too hard. The kick went in, but it was good, but it wasn't his good fluid motion that we want to see out of him. But nonetheless, it's an extra point that counts. 34 to 14 as Peabody has extended their lead to 20 with 7.25 to go in this contest. Let's take a break and we'll hear a word from our sponsors as you're watching Golden Tide Football on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. <laughs> 